actually, you know, there's a lot of commonalities in our views here, which is good. I took a slightly different approach. I actually went backwards, starting with the um, technology more than anything else. Next point is, is the is the merge company between Nextone and ReefPoint. Nextone has been building SPCs for quite some time now, along with Acme, and uh, I think we consider each other, each other competitors in that regard. Uh, ReefPoint was uh, primarily involved in uh, security gateways for the mobile, as well as for fixed carriers. Uh, primary applications were fixed mobile convergence applications. Together, essentially, we're attacking uh, what we think is a brand new opportunity in mobile broadband. There's going to be a huge growth in mobile broadband, and the combination of technologies actually uh, allows us to uh, build very interesting products. Uh, the breakdown that Tony gave on the on the four main functions of, of SPCs, I think, is spot on. Uh, interworking, uh, the uh, Kalia, and so on, DDoS DOS protection, normalization. That was it, right? So I think that's that's pre pretty much the way we would view SPCs. Um, next point: backgrounds. Fi about 550 service providers worldwide. We've got offices all over the place. 50% plus of the ILD market. And uh, from Security Gateway perspective, it's it's the best product on the market at this point. We attack essentially all kinds of solutions: interconnect, access, mobile, and fixed. With these products, the two primary products from the switching perspective are really the SPC itself and a new product called the Integrated Border Gateway, which incorporates the SPC, and it also incorporates other functions, such as Security Gateway, IP Mobility functions, such as TTG, PDIF, um, and uh, uh, I'm missing one, but essentially it's the IVG is really a chassis-based system targeted towards larger scale applications, particularly on the access side for fixed mobile applications. Our platforms run essentially on off-the-shelf hardware. Now, it's not a religious thing with us. We think that's the most cost-effective way to deliver very, very high-performance systems, and we've, we've proven that in the field. We run on both ATCA with the IBG and COT servers with the SBC. They essentially both run on similar uh, hardware technologies, whether it comes from Intel processors, Cadmium network processors, RASA network processors. Okay, so diving into the architecture, um, this is actually very similar to the previous slide you saw from uh, from Acme, uh, a little higher level, I guess. But essentially, we have the lowest layer is the media processor. That's that's essentially a network processor. In our case, it's a Cadmium network processor, and it does uh, NAPT functions, policing. So, for example, if users ask for 729 and they're using 711 bandwidth, we would police that and we would throttle that traffic. QoS metrics collection, where we collect. Uh, RTP metrics such as jitter, packet loss, packet discard, latency, and so on, and Kalia, of course, for media forking and so on. And the H248 interface essentially integrates with the signaling element above. And the signaling element has a couple of interesting aspects to it. It's a back-to-back -back user interface design. This allows the SBC to essentially do interworking between SIP H8323 uh, for access and for inter interconnect applications. The policy and route, enfor uh, route enforcement layer is really about either using embedded policies in the device, meaning the policies that are configured in the device, or to go to external systems, whether it's a PDF, a policy decision function, or an enum uh, route server, or other kinds of routing databases. So an SPC essentially has to fit into a larger ecosystem and allows, you know, essentially has to talk to other devices to, um, to uh, give it policy information. And of course, the signaling element has to do also uh, DDoS, DOS protection, protocol checking, uh, and the like. When we say policy, we're talking about yeah. everything from essentially uh, restricting the codec types that uh, a call would use or, or a subscriber would use to uh, egress call rates that are allowed on a particular endpoint. So if you have an interconnect solution, you want to essentially manage how much traffic you want to send across different kinds of endpoints. We can do that, and we can actually balance the traffic. We can say percent of the traffic goes here, percent there, and so on. Um, there's actually a tremendous amount of policy controls that that, are, that uh, we can provide on that traffic. Notice that the signaling and media is separate. Typically, that's the way it's deployed. There are cases where people want to actually use signaling and media over the same interface. Um, generally speaking, though, separating the two gives you better better scale and better security. The way we see this evolving um, is actually is something we announced recently called the CSBC or the Converged Services Border Controller. 
It incorporates the traditional SBC, but with a security gateway. And this actually allows you to deliver both session and data services at the same time in a converged box. So this is convergence taken from a different aspect, not an SBC in other boxes necessarily, but essentially we're converging other functions into our SBC. Now we're also working with other vendors to incorporate our SBC into their chassis, but we think this is a uh, very good direction in terms of how we see mobile services especially uh, being deployed because clearly you're going to see all kinds, of, you're going to see an explosion of data services on mobile devices. It's, it's going to be much bigger growth on data than it is on, on session. So essentially the security gateway allows you to terminate IPsec, carry all kinds of different traffic, the data traffic can get um, can get shunted to a router, for example. It also manages the flow on those uh, data on that data traffic because there is an embedded DPI device in that security gateway, and that came from Repoint. And then the session board controller essentially handles the traditional session-based traffic. On the interconnect side, it's it would evolve to an IBCF. That's the that's the IMS uh, definition of the signaling element of a, of a an SPC. Taking it one step further. The evolution really is the full decoupling to allow you to scale the media and signaling independently. I think, personally, I think this makes much more sense on the access side, probably less sense on the interconnect side. There's nothing preventing you from using it on the interconnect side, simply because the scale that people are talking about access on the access side tend to be bigger. Um, now, same kind of uh, interactions with external devices like a PDF uh, are there. And of course, you can have Enom and, and all the all the rest. Uh, our products essentially are typically shipped on 2U servers, very very high capacity Intel servers. Uh, gives us uh, and, and there's an embedded network processor in there on a PCI card. So there is essentially a dedicated processor for media as well as uh, dedicated processors for signaling. The ATCA chassis are the two slot or 14 slot. Gives you huge amounts of capacity up to 600,000 subscribers, for example, or 150,000 sessions. Um, and that's fully redundant inside the chassis. 24 gigs of media capacity, it's very, very, very high capacity at the top end, but it gives you a nice gradual growth from small to big. I'm not gonna get into this because I don't have time, but there's different deployment scenarios, but I, as I said, I went from the inside out. Uh, this is a typical uh, wholesale VoIP operation, it's very sophisticated in terms of three to three and SIP trunking. Uh, and essentially our systems, together with the management system, allows you to manage traffic between uh, different, uh, different carrier groups. SPC access is pretty typical deployment. I think you've seen probably that in lots of different places. Um, but uh, the SPC sits on the very edge, essentially gives security services. Topology hiding, for example, is very important. And also uh, regulatory like Calia, 911 support, and things like that. Phantom Cell Gateway is a brand new one, as we talked about. This really gives you the high scale termination for IPsec for FMC applications. That's it.